okay, so today we will be covering how the regulatory framework in the European Union. Uh, how do they regulate their uh, registration? What different rules do they have for the registrations? And uh, mm -hmm. we would be focusing on the, those aspects for the Europe. Yeah. So first is centralized procedure. Centralized procedures for that, we do the application to EMA. Yeah. European Medicine Agency. We have a one scientific evaluation by EMA. This EMA has a composition of 27 member states that we talked about. So all these 27 member states, representative of each of it, would be sitting and reviewing the application. Now what happens, all those 27 members cannot sit and spend time on your application, isn't it? 27 is a big headcount for your applications review. So what do they appoint is the reviewer of EMA is called as rapporteur. So they call world as rapporteur. So rapporteur is a person responsible out of these 27 member states to do the review. So these 27 member states considering the man hours or time available for any of the representative, they would give the person to do the review. So they will appoint one out of 27 to act as a major person to do the review on behalf of 27 of them. And that one person that they assign, they use the terminology as rapporteur. Now, if only one person does a review, there could be a bias approach when they do the review, isn't it? So they assign a co-rapporter. What is co-rapporter? It's just like president, vice president, similar kind of rapporter, co-rapporter. So rapporter is a one, the first person or a major authority. Authority as in the person re responsible doing the review on behalf of 27 member states. It is appointed by those 27 member state representative, one out of that, considering the capacity or the uh, therapeutic area or the major population or the major drug that it would be sold in, they appoint one. There are multiple factors that they consider and they appoint one out of them. And then there is a co-rapporter who would support the rapporter to do the review. So rapporter, co-rapporter are the names or the terminology used for the assessors when centralized procedure is involved for our application. Yeah. Now, MA is issued by the European Commission, valid in the entire EU territory. So that is all this. So you would have a single MA. And against that single MA of centralized procedure, you are able to sell your product in all those 27 markets. And there are three other markets who are adapting the EU norms. So you could sell that product to them as well. So overall 30 countries that you could sell product after you get the approval in the centralized procedure. Man, the Now centralized procedure, you can't just by default opt for a centralized procedure. There are certain rules that you are supposed to comply with for you to opt the centralized procedure option. So centralized procedure, is not open for all. You cannot just get up and say that, OK, this is easy application with one license. I could get a 27 approvals. I mean approvals in 27 country. Let's go ahead and do the centralized procedure. That's not how it is. There are certain conditions that are first one has to fulfill to opt for a centralized procedure option. What are those conditions? So if you have a biotech product, by default, you are supposed to opt a centralized procedure. You cannot take any other means to do the registration of the product. Then there are certain therapeutic classes, such as cancer. And uh, there are other therapeutic classes as well, where you have to go for a centralized procedure. And for orphan products as well, you have to go for a centralized procedure. So three of the conditions you could opt for a centralized procedure option. One is your product could be biotech. There are certain set of therapeutic classes that are listed for centralized procedure. 
other is orphan product there is ideally fourth category which is suppose you are a generic applicant your reference product if it has a centralized license for some reason and you being generic you could opt for a centralized procedure with the fact that obviously the innovative product must have been in any of this category so biotech or specific therapeutic class or orphan products knowing that your reference product has opted centralized procedure due to any one of this category you being generic could also go for a centralized procedure option yeah so these are certain categories so we submit the dossier to send ema authority uh, EMA authority after we submit it. So before before you really go for a uh, centralized procedure for that matter, any of this submission, the first process is you will go to the agency's website. They would have assigned one contact point where you can drop in an email with your interest of submitting the initial marketing application with a certain set of details. So you would fill that form, the template, and you will send that template to the email box, generalized email box they have on the website. You would submit that filled form to that generalized mailbox, and you would in mention them that you have an interest of doing the initial marketing application for this, this product. Uh, this is the API composition, and this is what your project, projection of launch is and what is your revenue or market capture that you would have thought and what are the countries of interest that you think would be uh, having a major sale for your product you fill that whole form you send it to the common mailbox once they receive they assess it and considering the availability of the reporter core reporter they will give you a slot they will tell you after three months between this this date, you submit your dossier. That means that's the time your reporter co reporter is going to be free with their current responsibility and they would start reviewing your dossier. So European Union, for that matter, for any of this procedure, you would first book the slot. So first is slot booking. You will let them know that you have an interest of doing the initial marketing application. They would assess their reviewer capacity and based on the reviewer capacity you will be assigned a reviewer and a time slot in which you are supposed to make the application that's what they would do once you have that slot on that particular slot you will make the submission and the reporter or co reporter who has been assigned by the emea would take up your dossier start reviewing and after they are through with the review they would send you the articles now eu european union for all this process they have a particular time uh, table so they they issue the time so once they receive your dossier they would do the first first is validation we heard the terminology validation during our very first indian regulation part that we did so validation is where do the where they do the administrative review of the, your package to ensure that everything that they anticipated for you anticipated you to include you have included so that's the validation they will receive the dossier they do the administrative validation once it qualifies the administrative validation it goes for a technical review once they do the technical review they would send you the set of articles so when they do the administrative review and your dossier passes the validation criteria they issue the timetable so you will get a timetable in your inbox where they will tell you on which particular date you will receive the rtq why do they tell you is because you have to keep yourself available during that time to ensure that you are timely responding their rtq rtq is request for further information so they would say <laughs> so when when you uh, when they send you they will send you the timetable to let you know when do they intend to send you the list of questions or needed information to let your application be approved they will send you the timetable 
reading the timetable you are supposed to know when do you expect agency to come back to you and based on that you have to keep yourself and your relevant staff in the production uh, aware so that they could be also available for you to respond timely and based on the timetable you would ensure that you're responding timely to the agency once they receive the response they will review the response then they will if at all they have additional set of questions they will send it back to you you would respond once agency gets satisfied with all the responses that you have made they will give you they will grant you the license so uh, this is procedure ideally for all of the licenses all of the processes that we follow uh, in terms of centralized procedure, we do it to the EMEA. We have a reporter and a co reporter assigned. And one license is applicable across all 27 countries. Now, what is 